you had to get the word to know the nature of Jesus. Then the nature of Jesus is the things through the word that performs the miracle. They were filled with the Holy Spirit and they spake the word of God with boldness. Here comes the boldness. That means that they weren't afraid to, to speak boldly about the possibilities and, and claims of the word of God. They, they were not living in any type of fear. All right. And the multitude of them that believed were one heart. Now, that's interesting. The multitude of them that believed were of one heart. See? You can always tell when people in an assembly aren't believing. They don't have one heart. The first evidence, just like the fruit of the Spirit, is love, joy, and peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faithfulness, meekness, and temperance, the same thing is true if a person truly doesn't believe the word of God and rationalizes the content of it, they are never, ever one with the body of Jesus Christ, the assembly where they attend church. And the first thing that they get off is they're not one in their heart because they don't have the right belief system. Okay? Okay? Now we'll continue. And the multitude of them that believe were of one heart and one soul. Now, if he's going to say one heart, why would he include one soul? Because the heart and soul, while interrelated, are separate. Now, let's see how good you remember when, we, when we've given you in the college classroom the definition for heart, we don't give you the commentary's definition, which is this. The heart is the seat of your affections and the seat of your emotions. Well, it's far more than that. Come on, don't, don't. They get these, these stereotype definitions and every commentary is the same thing. Oh, the heart is the seat of your emotions. So what's the seat of your emotions? Well, then it's the seat of your affections. What's the seat of your affections? Your heart is the center of everything. And if, you, if we live in the old heart, it's deceitful and desperately wicked. Okay, then. Heart is, first of all, our what? Our premise for motivational thinking. Our heart is our premise for motivational thinking. Number two, our heart is the basis for operational behavior. For operational behavior. Therefore, our heart is the supreme center for communication. Our heart is the supreme center for communication. Therefore, our heart is where our thoughts, our emotions, and our decisions are made. Now, that's a lot better than the seat of your emotions. A whole lot better. A lot of people don't like to have the word emotions included in your, in your heart, and of course it's included in your heart because your emotions don't dictate your mind, but it sure shows the results of what you think. All right. So one heart, then soul, mind, emotions, conscience, self-consciousness, and volition, and, unfortunately, the old sin nature is a part of the soul if it isn't nullified by the cross and its dominion. Soul, all right? Heart and soul. Neither said any of them that aught of the things which he possessed was his own, but they had all things common. 
And that doesn't mean, by the way, folks, they sold their houses and sold their cars and gave it to the people. It doesn't mean at all. It means in those days, as the church started out, if they had two houses, they'd sell the second one, but not, not their own. That's true in Isagogics. Verse 33. And with great power gave the apostles witness of what? The resurrection of the Lord Jesus. Now the whole thing that really got, got them going was they gave a witness of the resurrection. And they did it with great power. And this is the result of it. And great grace was upon them, what? All. The word, the miracles, oneness, and great power demonstrating the resurrection and great grace. And the key to the results of all of this, the key was the great grace was upon them all.